Mrs H here. This video will take you through how to calculate standard deviation by substituting values into the formula and show you a shortcut method using the stat mode on your calculator. Check out biologybreakdown.co.uk for supporting sheets and more examples. Standard deviation is a measure of the spread of values about the mean. It tells you how much the values in a single data sample vary. A low standard deviation indicates that the data have a narrow range and the data points are closely grouped to the mean. This shows greater precision. A high standard deviation indicates that the data points are less well grouped together, therefore they show less precision. You will be given the formula in an exam, so you just need to know what each part means S stands for standard deviation, and then we have this sigma sign that means the sum of. X is the value in the data set, and X with a little bar all over the top is the mean of that data set. N stands for the number of values in the data set, and the minus one is important. We use N minus one because in biology we only deal with samples of data rather than whole populations. If there was a whole population of data, then you would use the standard deviation formula with just n. But we don't do that in biology, so we will be using n minus 1. Let's have a go. Here is an example. A student wanted to see if the lengths of holly leaves are different at different heights in a holly tree. They measured 10 holly leaves from a height of 0.5 metres and 10 holly leaves from a height of one meter. You can see their table of results. They need to calculate the standard deviation to see the spread of values about the mean. First, we will work out the standard deviation of the data collected at the height of 0.5 meters. We need to work out x minus the mean, and then in the next column, square that value. The mean length of the holly leaf at 0.5 meter was 9.3. So for the first row, x is 10, the mean is 9.3. So we do 10 minus 9.3, which is 0.7. Then just follow that down and complete the rest of the column. Then square the value. So 0.7 times 0.7 equals 0.49 and so on and so on. Once you've completed that column, you can find the sum and then substitute the values into the formula. So S equals the sum of X minus the mean squared. So that is 8.1. Divide that by N minus one. Well, N is 10, because we've got 10 pieces of data. Minus one, that gives us nine. So S equals the square root of 8.1 divided by nine. That gives us 0 0.9. Then we need to find the square root of 0 0.9, which is 0 0.9486832981. We can round that up to give us 0 0.949 or 0 0.95. So the standard deviation for the data collected at 0.5 meters high on the holly tree is 0 0.95. Before we work out the standard deviation for the second row of data, I want to show you a quicker way to work out standard deviation using the stat mode on your calculator. Your make of calculator might be different to mine, but this method should work if you have stat mode. First, you need to press the mode button and select stat. Select 1 minus VAR and enter the first value from your data and press equals. Then enter the next value and press equals and so on until you've entered all the values. It gives you an option to keep going but you press AC and the screen will show zero. Press shift, then stat, which is on this calculator, can be found above the number one. Select 
fair, VAR, then select SX. You must press SX as this is a standard deviation in a sample of data and is worked out using N minus one. The other standard deviation is for a whole population of data. So that would just be using N in the formula. So once you've pressed SX, then press equals and you have your standard deviation, which is 0 0.948683298181. The same number as you did the other way. Or you can round it up 0 0.95. This is a much easier method to use, especially if you have a big set of data. You just need to remember to use SX when you get to the end. We may as well calculate the standard deviation of the lengths of leaves measured at one meter high on holly tree. So at 0 0.5 meters, the standard deviation was 0 0.95. Let's use the substitution method again. The values have been put into the X column, as you can see. Following the same procedure as before, you can work out X minus the mean, and this time the mean is 7.3. Then complete the x minus the mean squared column and find the sum of, which is 10.41169. Pop that into the formula and divide by n minus 1, which is 9. That gives you 1.156854 recurring. Then do the square root. The standard deviation is 1.16. And uh, if you want to, you can practice that with the stat mode on your calculator. If we plot this data as a simple bar chart, we can see that the mean length of holly leaves measured at 0.5 meters high on the tree was greater than the mean length at one meters high. But there is variation about the mean, which is shown as the standard deviation in the table. You sometimes see the means written in this way. So if you have a look, you've got 9.3 plus or minus 0 0.95. So that is one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. And then you've got 7.3 plus or minus 1.16. We can plot the standard deviation on the graph and these are called error bars. This is an error bar. It shows one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. The mean is the middle of the error bar. This error bar is drawn 1.16 centimeters above the mean and 1.16 centimeters below the mean. And the error bar for 0 0.5 meters is 0 0.95 above and 0 0.95 centimeters below. Look at the top of the error bar at one meter. It overlaps with the error bar at 0 0.5 meters. This shows that even though there is a difference in the means, the variation in the data collected overlaps. In other words, some of the biggest leaves at one meter are the same length as the smallest leaves at 0 0.5 meters. So this shows that there isn't a significant difference between these two means. If we look at a different example, these means are significantly different because the error bars do not overlap. To determine the level of significance, we can use a statistical test called a student's t-test. But that is a different video that you will be able to find on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. Another interpretation you can make from the error bars is how precise the data is, i.e. If there is a little variation about the mean, the error bar will be small and our results will be more precise than results with a larger error bar. A large error bar shows a greater spread of results about the mean and therefore less precise data. One last thing to show you is that you can also draw error bars on line graphs. And that's it, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and head over to biologybreakdown.co.uk for more resources, including the students' t-test and other statistical tests.